Rubik, but we haven't really seen him too much with other displacement abilities. Five Already dipping into the reserve time here. Evil Geniuses, they're going to go ahead and ban out the Storm Spirit. A signature on their own team, and of course the form of Sumail, but maybe fear a little bit of that early snowball potential gap closing on their own side here. And also maybe suggesting EG aren't going to be picking much lockdown to follow up with their next couple of picks. And Storm could be a hero that could give them problems if they're, if they're not picking. If they want to go into something like the PPD Abaddon, then they've got Abaddon Visage as their two supports. They pick a hero for Fear that is maybe like a Clinks or something that isn't best to deal with Storm, especially nowadays with Fear not opting to go for the Orchid. Suddenly, you've got no answers for Storm. Team Secret, they ban out the Tinker, which we did see in the last series. And they're going to move on forward and now pick up the Dazzle here. A bit of an early defensive support. Keeps with the beautiful bluish purpley theme here on the side of Secret, but of course adds that really nice longevity. Good shallow grave, good minus armor to work with. Just feels a bit defensive right now to have a backup plan for Drow. Still needs someone to be maybe that meaty frontliner for their team. Draw the attention away from your precious Drow. They, I, I like the Dazzle pick for multiple reasons. Firstly, Puppy picks this almost every time it's available, mm -hmm. which puts a lot of pressure on drafters to ban it and think of ways to counter it. Secondly, it's really good for his heavy single target burst, which Clockwork and Visage excel at. And uh, thirdly, it's really good with the Dark Seer Vacuum. If you have Vacuum Wall, they're all stacked on top of each other, and then you can get a nice heal bomb. So it's a very untraditional combo to the Dazzle, as opposed to like an AoE stun, a Ravage, a uh, you know Epicenter, or something like that, which traditionally is combo with the Vacuum Wall. But even something as simple as like a Gust into or like a Shadow Wave into a Gust, that's four people like silenced and taking massive physical damage. Also, you know, Weave is also really good with Draw Ranger, so I think the Dazzle pickup's good. Here comes the Goat Man out from the gate and on the side of the boys in blue here. More than likely, I would imagine being the Fear Core Lashrak could always pull a bit of an audible here as things go on forward, but we have been seeing a lot more of them since the debut of 6.4 here. It too. He played at mid just the other day. There's no setup though. There's no Shadow Demon. Yeah, Rubik's banned out. Uh, Clockwork's like decent, but fairly ulti reliant. So I don't know whether they're going to do like another gr a greedy support. I mean, Aoi hasn't really played too much like Enigma or Coddle. Sometimes it's banned out, but uh, EG has been switching it up and not making Aoi's hero predictable, which is really important because. Isn't he just going to play the Visage this game though? Probably. But you never know. I They've guess, done a I guess Visage. The Fear's yeah. actually played Visage before. That's you're right. Fear has oh, played yeah. it. You're right. You're right. Also adds a bit of pushing flavor, of course, with Lestrec and Visage. Why are you shaking your head? They want to like build Viper. into it. This is this is a filthy draft from Seeker. Yeah, yeah, pretty disgusting and downright dirty right here. Viper, of course, gets that sweet uh, additional bonus damage coming out from your Drow. Uh, it could add him a bit of a segue into a more core in the late game, but nonetheless, yeah, filthy. Exactly. Viper's a really good counter to the heavy intimates, uh, like Leshrac, Lina, uh, Zeus. I would say like Viper just completely dumps on them, and you can't really kill the Viper at any point in the lane unless you have a gank from uh, one, usually two people. So that's pretty much an auto lane one for Secret, I would say. Um, and on the flip side, Darkseer, we see a lot of mech first Darkseer, and then they have a long time. Uh, coming until they can actually hit a vacuum wall, but with another mech carrier, you can force them into a blink first, which is much scarier because you just win one team fight and then you have like another 1500 gold. We see Evil Geniuses in the room ready to play. Very focused here. They were going to be. They picked up the Witch Doctor now, which I guess technically could still be a, you know, coreless track. It could be a core visage if they decide to switch around, but I, I would feel like with the reveal of the Witch Doctor here, it's looking more likely that this could be a core lash, but PPD won to play the Witch Doctor. It is Evil Geniuses, after all. They have done crazier things in the past. Witch Doctor, not the greatest at zoning out Darkseer, so that's a slight concern, but pretty good versus Viper, because uh, he usually just stands there and does damage. No way to interrupt the Witch Doctor, and also the attack speed slow doesn't affect the Death Ward, so you'll get the very high damage out of your yeah. Witch Doctor Death Ward. Yeah, you got a jump in coming from Clockwork, getting in their face. They immediately have to address the Clockwork, deal with that situation, but then you forget things like your backline Witch Doctor, who gets a very heavy hitting Death Ward off. So there's going to be a lot of stuff coming their way, and then, of course, the precious little Visage Birds. So this is 
going to be a bit of a handful here, it looks like, so far for Team Secret. But going now into our final phase, last bands to come out. Secret rid of the brew here. And now we look to EG. Gods, what do you think? What could? What are we going to get to round out the lineup here? Secret gets the next pick. I don't think they want to go for something like the Clinks as they did earlier. They're worried. At this point, you see Secret. They're going five-man. They're death balling. They're pushing down towers. They have a huge team fight. You need something that can team fight. I think Bristleback is maybe still possible for EG as a safe laner or a mid laner, depending on how they want to do the Lashrak. But I think they need something that can fight in the early to mid game. And Bristleback is one of the big heroes that stands out uh, as far as EG are concerned. Outside of that, it might just be more a Sumel oriented hero if it will be Fear on Lashrak. But Shadow Fiend's still possible, I guess. Shadow Fiend's decent as far as fighting in the mid game. I really like the Brewmaster. And they're trying to limit Evil Genius' options for laning, and they really want to force Lushrak mid and give him give Viper that really favorable matchup. Uh, Vi Brewmaster actually does really well versus Viper, especially if you just get one point in Drunken Haze, so that would actually limit a lot of Viper's effectiveness. I think his greatest strength is simply just mm. winning his lane. What about Windranger for the mid lane matchup then against Viper? You do have Windranger to fall back on, but... It's not, it's not great. It's not bad. He shouldn't die. She shouldn't die, rather, but at the same time, she yep. should get out harassed, and there's still more kill potential, especially with the true shot aura. You're already yeah. at a huge disadvantage. Or maybe a razor will see. Vengeful Spirit, though, is going to be the last pick here for Team Secret. I love the color coordination, but now you got the precious swapped out support. Could help anyone that the Clockwork does decide to drop on. And I don't, I don't like the ES ban from EG. I, I don't think they want to sprung for the ES. There's like too many ways to interrupt his blink. Clockwork's really, really good versus Earthshaker, and I don't, I don't know. I guess maybe they're really scared of him roaming around on the mid lane. Uh, but again, I think that matchup's almost already lost for EG, and they have to concentrate on some of the other lanes. Oh my! Looks like it will be a Sumail mid lane. Lashrek with the grab up. It's going to be Old Man Fear taking up the. Phantom Lancer here. You're talking about the side of Secret, a lot of single target. Well, that could be a, a bit difficult now when you got someone like a Phantom Lancer on your side. What do you think, Gods? Now the draft is complete. Who do you feel more confident in? Feel a lot more confident in Secret. I think they've got a much easier to execute draft. Uh, PL's going to have a tough time fighting, uh, even with the help of the Illusions, fighting into like a Darkseer vacuum wall, fighting into Iron Shells. It's just a tough secret opposition. It's good because the hero doesn't have to fight. He can opt to split push more and look to stay away. When secret start five manning, that PL is going to be in charge of just going down another lane. I feel though if they're picking it for the split push, they maybe would have been better off going for something more like a, a Naga Siren uh, if that's why they're picking it. So it does make me think they want to fight uh, to some extent with the hero, but it's also not going to be great for actually engaging in secret. Quick shout outs, of course, we have I believe it is Mott who is going to be our OBS in-house right here. I believe we also have Knoxville going to be providing our stats. Myself, Gods, and Merlini taking away the cast right here. This is game number one of this best of five, the grand finals for the Summit 3. Presented by Gigabyte Gentlemen, a lot of money on the line. I want to say, what are we looking at? About $170,000, $180,000 for your first place. PBD That's says, I like your opener, Carl. I think that means that it was a little unexpected, if anything. This if is, anything else. without a doubt, these two teams. A lot of experience playing against each other. A lot of experience <laughs> uh, going against each other. This is going to be uh, some friendly he's, he's banter. I think that because that's the opener that uh, PPD went for against yeah. the, yeah, the true. So it's like, oh, I like it. You're copying me. <laughs> but EG lost with it. EG got yeah. stomped 2 0. Who can it. do it better, though? That's the thing, yeah. I guess, I, I think they look at those games and it wasn't because of those picks. I think the taking the draw away from the Visage and using the Darkseer in that draft is something that both teams really want to prioritize this series, is heroes like Darkseer, uh, like Clockwork as well. I think these are going to be the top two offlaners off for this series. I think the biggest, uh, the, the most important point in the laning phase is Darkseer in this game. Like Viper is Viper, is Viper. he should win his lane, he should limit Lashrax farm and be slightly ahead in CS. And then the Drow Ranger should have a very easy time against the Clockwork, especially if either the supports come and zone him out. But the Darkseer is the one that needs to limit the PL's farm, keeps, keep the supports occupied, and has a lot of potential to disrupt the lane and not die, but at the same time, Darkseer, if he gets off to a really bad start, PL would just free farm, get a defusal early, and just constantly kill him by purging off the Surge. So it's it's really important that Zai doesn't give up a few early kills. So we'll keep our watch on that off lane as far as where Zai is going to reside. It's going to be a tough lane here going against that try, but your mid lane matchup be that Lishrek versus the Viper. 
Dodge any early impressions right here. The Shrek should be able to somewhat hold his own, but Viper known to be one to dominate. Yeah, Leshrek's just going to be sitting back, spamming his Lightning Storm, and trying to just compete for farm as much as possible. I think Leshrek should do okay here, at least as far as getting farm. I don't see this being one-sided. Is some risk of maybe support rotations, especially like a smoke gank from the Vengeful Spirit, but... You see Puppy move to the top lane. He really wants to get side two. They don't have any Observer Wards up there, and they don't want them to have a, just a complete free lane. They do have a nice Observer Ward, which will see Puppy, but mm -hmm. can they really make a move on him right there? It's... He's trying to play out of line of sight, but now he is. Yeah. Puppy also doesn't want to necessarily leech XP from Zai, who does oh. get initiated on. He has uh -oh. not got Surge yet. I have to go the around. damage for this. Doesn't they're look trying like to it. pressure him as much as possible, knowing that he got that Ion Shell. Yeah, they they really want to get him to get him some levels. And I mean, Puppy has a split experience, so it's going to take him twice as long. But at the same time, it's just so desperately needed. If they force him into the jungle, that's a huge win for EG. They're just not. They're just going to try to be the gatekeepers right now for this top lane. Do not cross this line. Do not come close to our man Fear. It's going to have a good early CS gains right here for your mid lane. 7 to 3 4. Your Viper, Lesh, at 6 and 0, oh, relatively neck and neck. Sumail kind of getting a couple hopes denies in there, but it's not happening. He has his bottle now. Only one more shared Tango to go with, and that two minute rune is going to be popping up. And it looks like top lane. We could see a bit of a clash here. PPD and Puppy both going at each other. EG more assertive on this front. Oh. Zai's going to be too late. Oh, look at that. It's a haste rune right now. They're Breaks just going to dance him a bit, but. Yep. Not going to fall through. Okay. Solid. Just control for coming out from EG. And Fear already bringing out more Tangos on the Courier as well. Something he knows he's going to need against Dax here. So looking to be able to stay in this lane as long as possible. And uh, really try and prevent this secret offlane from getting much done. Because he has to be constantly tanking the Iron Shell to last hit. While his supports aren't really helping him out. Because they're focusing on zoning out Dax here as much as possible. Okay, there's the slow. I should be fine though. They still commit with the cask here. They're just trying their best to kind of whittle down that regen. And as yep. you see, still has a Tango, still has a Salve. Pops his last clarity to just build up the extra mana and continue to get out those Ion Shells and get every little CS he can. Because of those Ion Shells, he's 7-0, and which is certainly better than Universe on the other side of the world. He's at 2-0 and right now. But as you can see, Sumail yeah. has to make the long trip back Jeez. to base. This is very good for S4 that's, on that Viper. That's the price to pay to bringing the extra Tangos out to top lane. Do they see that... Board? Okay, nice. Nice. That's that's so important for them. Uh, I mean, Zai's getting CS, but he's still not getting levels. I, I would, if I were in this mm -hmm. position, I would gladly trade uh, my CS for levels, but unfortunately, he can't. Right? He's yeah. limiting Fear's farm a little bit, but once he gets level three on Ion Shell, it'll be much more difficult for Fear to keep up with Regen as well as last hit. Zai's just gonna have to go Fountain. Yeah, he picks up a TP scroll. Maybe even the jungle at this point to get experience, but he is completely pushed out of top lane as he runs out of mana. At least he hasn't died yet. Yeah, yet to see that first blood this game as we get closer to the four minute mark right now. And I, uh, you say that where he's able to divert back to the jungle. I don't know if I've seen the new Darkseer have to go to the jungle quite yet. I've always been curious to see how much that new buff to Ion Shell could benefit a jungling Darkseer, but. We have yet to see it really displayed, and it looks like Sumail makes his way back to the mid lane, trades it up a bit with S4, who three points in that corrosive skin, really wants to make sure he reflects that extra bit of punishment onto the Lishrak. It, well, if he didn't go lightning build, he might have changed it up, but he went a lightning build, so mm -hmm. he's going to get hit by that very, very often. And of course, with bottle spam, you, you, it's very difficult to keep up with regen as any hero, and with corrosive skin, it makes it a lot easier. He's taken hits as far as last hit, as far as the last hits go, and even the denies is kind of slowing down his uh, his leveling here. Jamel really needs career prioritization. That's where he's probably telling Fear, like, look, this mid lane is not going well for me. If you keep taking that career, this is uh, not going to be a good game for my list track. Yeah, PBD doing a good job of zoning out during nighttime. This is usually when supports have trouble zoning him out. You have no vision with the observer ward mm -hmm. being taken down, and. You, it's it's nighttime, so you have a reduced vision and you can't really see him at all times. Oh, look at Secret. Look at to take advantage of that nighttime. Uh. They smoke up and they rotate on over. Could this be our first blood of the grand final? And going in the favor of Secret, we'll see as they look to round the bend, they're going to try to make the jump onto the Lishrek here. Yes, and Dire Vision not protecting Sumail too well, but he's already backed off a little bit here. It looks like. And it's just going to look to try and get the, the creepy equilibrium in the right spot, maybe in preparation for this gank coming his way. Yeah, he's going to just auto, uh, just tank a lightning so he gets slowed and then they're going to try and go in for the kill. But Sumail's in a very good place. Very defensive now, spot. 
Will be able to creep in for a CS, but doesn't want to overextend. Get some observer words out as well, and it uh, looks like uh, he's fine. He just spams out the wave twice with a lightning storm, and Radiant do not have a high ground observer ward right now without yeah, they that. Do. They have one on the on their oh, side. The, on the They're going side. in. Oh, right. They're going to get it. There's going to be lead in magic missile. Puppy's going to be there. Tries to get close for the healing, but it's not going to be enough to take down Sumail. Rotation even comes in from PPD and just throws out the coconut to keep him back. So your first gank not going to end in your first blood. They did see him place that observer ward, so that's a big deal. Even though it was, I mean, you could say it's unfavorable yeah. time. They did see that ward placed. Invisibility. Dumail gets a rune now as well, doesn't even need to bottle Crow. Oh. And Zai still level one. They're going for this kill, it looks oh like. Oh my god, he has no surge, no way of making it out, and that is it. It's going to be the soul assumption coming out from Aoi, who gets that first blood for EG. Zai is in a dark place right now, just trying to get the XP. And as you said, Ben, CS is great and all, but it's the XP that matters. Yeah, I didn't expect EG to play this aggressively on Zai. I mean, it, it is of utmost importance. So that's the only lane that you can like really, really win if you're EG. So I'm glad that they didn't decide to play greedy and stack. They got got over there really quickly. They dropped in as a reward and both of the supports full time, just complete zone out Zai. If he's gone from lane, then you can do other stuff like check rune stack, protect mid, but it's all about limiting a Darkseer's potential and his, his uh, levels have just suffered massively. And now we are going to see Zai just go to the jungle. He's like, I need to get level two for yeah, God's yeah. sakes. It's seven minutes in. You can tell that Secret didn't want him to do that, though. Yeah. They, they they really want him to be able to handle the lane on his own and pressure to PL. And uh, you could just tell from the way Puppy moved up, from the way he dropped the sentry, uh, healing him up so he doesn't have to go to the fountain. They devoted so many resources to ensure that lane for him. But in the end, it wasn't enough. So that's a that's a big loss for Secret in this yeah. early game. Could their mid and bottom lane both are doing so well as far as farming and last hits goes. And that's where if Darkseid did just say, screw it, I'm going to sack the top lane and go jungle, Seeker would be in an amazing position right now. They'd have both two lanes that are pretty much winning and a Darkseid who's getting a bit more experience. So Zai only now finds himself in the jungle approaching level three. Arcane boots now complete as well for Sumail on that Latrec. Could be a bit more fruitful now with those spells being able to put him out. A bit more harassment. Universe makes his return to lane. He's level five when you just try to compare that already to Zai. It's... Like night and day. Trying to get that level six. Then the hook shots start coming out. If it's yeah. any sort of repeat what we saw in the last series, once it comes together, he's just going to keep it going. And even this, like, they, they, they're prepared for Zai to TP up and then just kill him immediately without surge. So they're still trying to pressure him a lot. And the problem with him going to jungle early is that it, it makes the mid matchup not a one on one. And with Viper, you always want it to be a one on one matchup because you almost always win it. And he's winning, but not that much. Uh, again, just due to excellent positioning by Sumail. The Bottle Crow, of course, and the TPN from PPD. Those stacks that were built up being farmed down from Sumail. This tower very low. They rotate in. Puppy in there. They're going to dish out the Magic Missile on the PPD. They step back. They're not going to get to the Nino. It goes to EG. And now Puppy in trouble. Gets the heal off. Will be fine from the big hard hit of the Spirit Lance. But no further blood will be shed. But more money going the way of EG. It's looking like a very strong early game for them. Taking out that tower is important because now they can farm with the jungle. They're much more efficient at taking out stacks because of the lush wreck. Uh, and the Darkseer can take out stacks, but he's too under level to do them really quickly. And Viper, not a good stack taker. Dr Drow Ranger, not really either. So, uh, yeah, lush wreck can just continue to farm with the jungle, and any pressure is going to be. Uh, they're gonna be. They're gonna reveal it really early, just because of the, how far that lane's pushed out. If it's up to the T2, no one's there. He can just play safely close to the T2. PBD can get in position. S4, who had been patient in this mid lane, he's putting in the work and the muscle right now to bring down that tier one mid lane. He's gonna need a bit more time to work with it now. We could see Secret rotate towards that lane just to secure its finish. Not to see. We're looking to rotate towards the bottom here. What build has Arteezy gone for? Yeah, he's been, it's been very quiet from him in this game, but he's been essentially the big breadwinner, getting a lot out of that bottom lane. And he just does the one point in the Frost Hour early, obviously maxing out the aura. Morbid Mask, a couple of Wraith Bands. As your most farmed uh, hero on Secret, though, you want to be able to convert it into something. Because Drow's not the ultimate late gamer. PL will be able to dominate the Drow in the late game. So mm -hmm. Fear can convert his farm into a secure late game, whereas Drow Ranger needs to convert her farm to a strong early and mid dominance. And they haven't really been able to transition out of it because they have one weak link. 
Gods, would you say the game I, plan for Secret is uh, the typical drow, you know, where it's the 20 to 30 minute window where she really, really strides? I think even maybe earlier, like 15 to 20, they'll look to try and take Roshan around the time uh, they get a medallion. Smoke picked up by Drow now. This to me is Roche a clock. Artezi actually went for a Dominator, not for the uh, Mask of Madness, but maybe he grabs an Alpha Wolf to help him out. Um, it's it's way too risky. I mean, I guess. Let's see. Visage is not six uh, yet. So they don't have the that. Alpha Wolf. That is. That is bad. Oh, they're going to see bad. it. Yeah, they cannot. This is so risky. They're going to see it. That, that's getting they picked know. out. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it went? They send it low, uh, and, you know. They see, they know that it's not smoked. They don't want to give too much away. But why else you, you would an Alpha Wolf be there? Universe is in range. Does he have Rocket Flare up he, though? He has Rocket. I he just... hasn't thrown it. He has got it now. He, should, he needs to scout this. Hook shot available. Yep, is. he sees it. He sees it in time. This is bad for Secret. He's got a hook shot too, and they got to pull back. It's He's it's going, too I much think. of a risk. They have to sacrifice Kuroki. Yep. Oh, makes the jump though under Curl. Bumps him back okay. and away. Not gonna follow up with it, but just kind of bumping elbows with him, letting him know, hey. We know what you're doing here. s has got mech. I don't think EG want to take this fight into the Viper mech. Wow. And this may actually be Roche secured for secret still. That would have been s completely safe with the with the wolf. Man, I underestimated her damage output. My goodness. Yeah, they hit pretty damn hard. Kuro has a... Does he have a... Dallin? He's gone no, three points in uh, aura. Yeah, the aura. Yeah, he... I thought Clogger was going to go in with a cog, but he actually realized RTZ's <laughs> massive damage output. 275? That's what ridiculous. I mean, Visage is, or uh, Vengeful Spirit is plus 74 and with only Boots and a Magic 1. It's crazy. The dual aura from the ladies. This is where Secret are really scary. This is just towers dropping one by one very likely. S4 and Arteezy in the front line. Mm -hmm. You've got Darkseer who just needs to be there with some points. Unfortunately, Darkseer, this is why you wanted leveled on him, not farm, as Ben was saying, because he can push with his team based on having a vacuum wall. Instead, yeah. he's level 5. He doesn't really offer anything to this push. It looks like he's on more defensive duty in the top lane as uh, EG are pushing there, but it's going to be Secret who will secure the first tier two here on the bottom, and they're like, let's just keep this party going. Yeah. Until they see uh, EG rotate over, they can do as they please. Create space for, for Zaya, I guess. You push the high ground so Zaya can have a free lane. This is why I think Arteez is one of the best carry players, because he's able to translate his farm into huge map control, huge objectives, and pressure an enemy team. I think like some Drow Rangers might just sit in the lane. Oh, no, S4. Oh, are they going to get S4 on the side here? Your Viper dishes out his Viper Strike, but he's not going to be taking anyone with him. Pop of the mech comes out from S4. Universe will end up going down. They get the Grave up preemptively for S4. He's fine for now. A one-for-one one trade. S4 will end up going down, making it a two-for-one in favor of EG. But space now. Gentlemen for Zai to work in this top lane. It was a 5v4 fight. They knew the Darkseer was top and couldn't get there. Uh, and that's where I think Secret were like, okay, they just TP everyone back. They've got a 5v4. Let's get out. But once the Viper got caught, Secret either had to completely ditch S4 or try and fight. And Puppy ran in to try and... I, he wasn't going to save him when he can't TP out. Meanwhile, Arteezy backed off. I think Secret kind of, in the moment, hesitated as far as what they wanted to do there. Well, they still drew back to the T3. They got some damage on the T3 as well, so yeah. it's not, not the worst thing in the world. Fear, you know, forced to leave that lane. The Diffusal Rush is really bad for Zai, and yeah. I think Fear realized that if he gets Diffusal, he could just completely shut down the uh, the Darkseer. Oh, Tower Deny now coming in from Arteezy while they are trying to snipe it. It looked like with the birds, and oh. they're going to end up having over a good chunk of change to Arteezy. And he has no birds to resummon here. I'm not sure what... AUI smoked for as well. Maybe a misclick, because he's not really headed anywhere. Too, it's, it's a visage. He's not exactly an ideal solo smoke hero. Yeah. And again, with the Drow Ranger, Secret just hitting too fast, too hard, and yeah, they're down in kills, but it doesn't matter. They took Roshan, took two towers, taking another two more right here. Mm -hmm. They also have really good deep wards up right next to the Secret Shop, so they can make oh, good defense. S4. Got his hands full here, but he might get Owie with it. He will for his own life. EG are going to follow it up with that tier one, but as you see, mid lane, the tier two is what goes down for Secret, who may be behind in kills, but they're the ones checking off all the objectives they need in this game. They're going to knock on their front door yeah. and hit the T3. They just want them to come back and limit their farm. If they yep. just back off after that, EG gets a lot more out of it because they get tower and they can farm both jungles, whereas Secret has a long time to retreat. Oh, so nice and tanky. All the bonus yep. armor coming out. You've got Weave, you've 
Got Medallion, I believe, on Puppy now mm -hmm. as well. Now he is going to get focused. Does have that Aegis, so even if he's brought down, he'll come back. But meanwhile, they're going to make the go into Kuroki, but the Shalgrave is going to save him out. That doesn't mean Puppy's going to be good, so he goes down. And it's a double kill for Fear as they jump up to the high ground here. Secret in a bit of trouble. Now that's the Aegis from Arteezy. Wall's going to be committed to make him get caught as they jump up to the high ground here. Arteezy has nowhere to run and nowhere to hide. The Split Earth locking him in place. A triple kill for Fear. Now this is... One of the best fights you could ask for from EG to just keep them at bay, giving so much to your Phantom Lancer. Man, losing that T1 tower is a, a big deal because they could have TP'd in with the Viper as well as the Ventral Spear who bought back and potentially saved Arteezy with a swap. But now that it's down, I, I mean, the clockwork was... It's really good for them that they're able to just start off fights. If they have no way to catch up the fight, Secret just gets away with murder, pretty much. Goodness gracious, look at that graph plummet right back down to the blue side, and after picking up that Diffusal, Fear is already close to 2k. My goodness. Just a bit overconfident with the Aegis, because EG's initiation is so solid, and the team fight around this PL now, who's suddenly ridiculously farmed, as is Sumail, he would be very careful. Having an Aegis and having two lives on Dro range, if Drover dies once, very likely it's a, a second quick death to follow. They're going to need BKBs at some point, I think. Lushrak is really strong mm -hmm. with all his magic damage, and then Phantom Lancer with the defusals. He, they can just get on top of him really, really quickly, and then keep him stunned with the Visage Birds in the cage. I mean, I guess they have defensive swap, but they definitely need next Aegis to continue this sort of pressure. Looks like Zest4 continues to farm up, going right for the Agnums after already completing that mech. For Zai. Working towards that four staff. They need it against this universe clockwork. Whoever does get caught out, they need the extra bit of defense to get them out from trouble here. And trouble could be coming here for Secret. The smoke is out right now, coming from PPD as he leads the front. They're going to go all the way out and around. They already have Kuroki's birds hanging there on the side. Sorry, not Kuroki. Howie's birds hanging on the side here to help scout a bit. But it doesn't look like the opportunity is going to be there for them. No, but... I like uh, the decision from EG to try and make this kind of a move and uh, try and catch Secret by surprise, get aggressive. Don't let Secret control the tempo of the game. Five man, take out your outer towers, control the map, get the next Roshan. This is what EG do not want. So they're going to look to be as uh, active on the map as possible. Split pushing with the PL, going around with the other four heroes is kind of like a four man fighting unit. And problem is, though, Fierce could be careful. He's around a lot of Secret heroes here in the Radiant Jungle. Secret on the prowl here, and there's a precious courier. Do they break it? Yes, they do. Doesn't take that much of a thought. No uh, cargo for it, but a nice little prize for Secret. Bit of gold, and uh, I believe picking up the Leshrax probably soul booster at that point. Maybe a vitality booster. Certainly trying to get it. Or even like a Visage Point Booster or something. Secret is just looking yeah, for visage. one kill so they can get that mid T3. The T3 is really low. It's at like 40%, 30% maybe. So all it takes is one kill and then they either get a buyback or a T3, both of which are pretty good options. But EG with probably superior positioning, they have no good way to catch the uh, catch the Dark Seer. They, they ideally want to be able to initiate with like a surge into a stun, but that timeline has just gone... It's way past that usual timeline for the surge initiations because I was level one until like level seven. And that was a four stop, so at least one way of Minnesota. dealing with the clockwork. That'll be handy. EG mm. gonna use another smoke, really trying to take advantage of what they see as a, a big window of time where they're pretty strong at team. They're pretty good at team fighting and. Secret may not be ready to deal with. One of the problems is they don't have good wards set up. Not offensive wards. Uh, one's on the river, on the top side, and then one's uh, on, like in their, protecting their jungle. Could be scouted, but uh, oh. that's a hook shot down. Oh. Not going to be catching, and Miji might have to pull back because of it. Unfortunate, perhaps. Oh, there were secret heroes in position ready to fight that. Bit of a misplay there. This is, of course, a lot of tension as we are going to see at the eight minute mark a longer Roche timer. And uh, I'd have to say, do you feel like maybe Secrets line up with this committed drow and you could feel the pressure as they continue to push and push? There could be a potential expiration date 
and allow EG to just kind of bring it back in the more late, late game. As long yep. as they get Aegis's, their timeline's like still pretty healthy. It's a little longer and longer. EG's going to yeah. contest those Aegis's, I feel, though. They've got the items and farm they need to at least fight around the pit. Yeah, they do, but they can't push out the lanes. Not as quickly as Secret, because yeah. they have Ion Shell uh, as well as Drow Ranger. And pushing out the lanes is currently the problem, because Secret have managed to get this mid lane all the way to the tier 3 tower. Force out a Glyph now, and this tower going down. Yes, it will. Raxes are now going to be exposed. Secret not looking to pull back quite yet. We'll see if EG can have another successful fight here to keep Secret back in at bay. But a good fight here for Secret could lead to Rax and then a fall back towards the Roche, but the jump in comes from Universe onto Puppy Bumps him towards the base and a Death War coming out from PPE. Annihilates with the Split Earth on top of it. Double kill for Sumail, double kill for Fear, and quickly four from Secret hit the deck. Wow, that was one of the best initiations I've ever seen by Universe. He hook shot into the Dazzle, he cogs the other two heroes back into the Death Ward, and that oh. was just disgustingly and good. And Leshrac then hit like a 2-3 hero split Earth. That team fight was what's immaculate. A what's a Ro Roshan spawn? One minute from okay. now. Very oh, close. They are so lucky that it didn't yeah. respawn. If they get that uh, Roche, it's, I would say, pretty close to game over. But here we go. This That was actually one of the most well-executed team fights I've ever seen. Like, well, he, he spots out believe Puppy walks so behind, will bump him he, all forward. He comes in from the south oh, and finds it. Yeah. And Zai gets pushed away. That's the big He's thing there. So far. If Zai didn't get caught on the far left, he gets a vacuum wall. He's zoned out by that cogs. That was That was all universe. That was such a difficult angle too. There was a wolf that was like really close to being in the way, but this is one of the dangers of pushing the high ground yeah. so early is if you mess up, you are going to give away so much. And the positioning is just immensely difficult. They were all spread out because they didn't want to get hit by cask, by lightning, and then universe just completely took advantage of that. And that means a bloodstone was complete for Sumail on his goat man. He already has the Yules. Serious man to work with now. So he's he, so confident he can push like yeah. really deep in these lanes. There's five heroes alive. He doesn't see that much of they the have map. No, they have no catch for but yeah, him. Nothing he, really to lock him in place. No initiation. Yeah. Only a drow silence, but that's not like a, a good initiation. He can just defuse it. it. Yeah. It doesn't even matter. Got a Mantis style coming out now as well, so there's another escape option. This game's suddenly looking uh, very, very good for EG. And the yeah. secret drop, they've got a time runner. They've got to win or at least take a lane of Rex soon, it feels like. And you're saying as long as Secret are able to secure maybe some ages for themselves, it could help them prolong this game a bit and keep the power advantage on their side. But that also means that if EG decide to move into this pit, Secret have to be there to contest it. I mean, EG doesn't have to take it though. They just have to prevent Secret from taking it. Mm -hmm. They do have really good vision. It's all about the Roche now because there is one lane of Rax exposed. So that is probably the only saving grace for Secret right now, as well as being able to take Roshan out in probably under 10 seconds. EG, they don't have a good Roche lineup at all. Phantom Lancer didn't go for a lifesteal build, which he shouldn't have. Uh, so that's the only thing that they can probably do to get a clean victory. Lots of pings flying out. Perhaps EG catching wind that a smoke is up there. PPD had dropped down this ward. They have to be in position like right now yeah. though. It, yes. it, it dies so They're quickly. Too far, I think. They're too far. Maybe with the birds. They Actually, got Seeker gonna... Slows them down. The rocket's there. They are beelining it towards this pit, but Roche is already falling past the halfway mark here. He's gonna die way too fast, and Secret are going to grab this, but they do move in. Vacuum catches him on the way in, and they have to go through that wall, but the jump in from Universe, they're still gonna be able to grab it, and it might be too late for EG as S4 gets the double. They're looking to back off in a way, but there's nowhere really to go unless it's through the wall. But Secret S4, he's gonna get pipped alive. It's Sue Mail. Fires on forward, Owie on the backhand side. They are gonna finish off S4 Zai, though the pressure coming out from Owie. His PL is away so from strong. Him. They cannot yeah. deal with the PL. Fear is just chomping on Owie through the rest. And Fear are just crushing. Exactly. That's it. And with that, out, uh, Arteezy will come back, but he has nowhere to go. Fear just surrounds his army, and Drow has no answer. A five-man takedown a at good, the expense of A universe. good gamble by Secret. I, they had to go for that play. I, they, they were losing 
all their pushes. PL was getting farmed enough that he can push out the lanes. They're losing all the team fights. So it, it was a gambit. It didn't end up paying off for them. But at the same time, at least it prevents EG from doing yeah. it. But they're really low on options right now. And, and those bird stuns to delay the start really gave EG time to get in there. Because EG, mo they don't, I don't think they care about the... They want to make sure Secret don't get the Aegis and five-man push. The key thing is... They get there and take a team fight because their team fight is far superior to Secrets. Their positioning was simply a lot better too. PBD gets immediately annihilated. Clockwork sacrifices his life in an attempt to get the Aegis, but as you said, fear is really strong. Their AOE is bare minimum, even. Yeah. AUI just got ignored too. He threw off like three, four, five soul assumptions in a row there, and no real answer for him. That was as good as it gets for EG, considering they got there a little late. Universe, I mean, got kind of just hooked into his death with the blade mail. He did next to no damage or even real disruptions in that fight. Now he's slowing them down as well with those familiar stuns. May have held them just there long enough so they couldn't take the Aegis and run away from an opportunity like that. But EG, the big favorites already in game number one, 17 to six, but. That opportunity for Secret to cross the river and now pressure that mid lane even further just seems to be, I don't want to say long gone, but certainly not as easy at this point. And Secret have to build BKBs at some point to deal with the Leshrac, the familiar stuns, the soul assumptions, the defusal, whereas Fear doesn't have to get one at all. Neither does Leshrac. They have a lot of HP and the PL is such a threat on the front lines and they have to use so many resources to uh, try and get away from the hook shot and the cog that it, there's so much havoc going on in the fights that EG can just simply use that to their advantage, just build damage and kind of truck secret. Also positioning for secrets is immensely difficult. If they clump up, they get hit by casks, they get owned by cogs and they get owned by split earth and lightnings and slowed constantly. Mm -hmm. But if they isolate themselves, PL will just pick them off one by one or they'll get isolated by a clockwork. So I don't really know how they're supposed to approach team fights. High ground is ideally the best place for them to take a team fight, but their late game is just not as good with no AoE. I mean, theoretically, you can build Maelstroms and Mjolnirs on your range heroes, but that is going to do that yeah. isn't going to do that much. I would figure that if you're committing to a drought kind of a lineup, you don't want to have to be falling no, back on a high ground fight. But <laughs> at this point, you you have to consider that you've lost almost every single team fight that you've taken. Yes. Uh, you don't have the Aegis on your side anymore, and the only way you're going to win is by out late game with the PL at this point. Unless you get like a miraculous smoking into a Rax, and even then I don't think that's enough unless you get two Rax. And with Darkseer, Blink, full stuff, he's got that good initiation, vacuum wall and a high ground defense, always very pesky to deal with, but mm -hmm. we saw EG yesterday, they were very creative and uh, kind of uh, good at actually sieging the high ground, using some split push when needed, and maybe something they could resort to here. Especially with the PL. Yes, that is definitely a strength of EG's lineup that will be difficult for Seeker to overcome. Darkseer excels at the 5 on 5 mid or 5 on 5 high ground push, but yes. yeah, EG can. I mean, even Leshrac with the birds, or sorry, Leshrac with his Edict, Visage with the birds, like they can push three lanes at once. Yeah. yeah. EG want to fight in open spaces like they did around the Roshan pit, but they don't want to take a 5v5 going up a choke point like the, the high ground. They just need a secure next Roche, and then the game is theirs. They can make any move that they want to and play very, very patiently. So, Secret, try not to mess things up and not lose before that next Roche happens. Oh, you gotta factor in, I'm sure, uh, Owie is on his way towards that Solar Crest. In fact, if, before I can even finish the statement, he's gonna be picking it up, and that's gonna be big work for their team. Talking about single target Viper, single target Drow. What item is PL going for? Uh oh, long hook in. Swap back for the save here, but Kuro could end up losing his own life. In addition to Puppy, they are going to pop up the mech from S4 to keep him back and alive. It's enough to survive here. That's pretty much just a two man gank, too, and the two people almost die off the bat. So, what, so what, a Scotty? Man, he likes his Scotties. It's a good bang for, a, bang for his buck, I suppose. He just needs to survive the fights. Better choice over the heart nowadays. Especially on melee. He got nerfed, but only for ranged. Yeah. It's always difficult to buy them. I'm like, where's that gosh darnin orb of venom? Oh, you're, you mean to tell me I got to go outside and up to that secret shop now? I do like that change because it makes it a bit more risky to have to commit for those late game items like your Scotty, like your Hex. Uh, and, you know, then you have to hope that your Coyer will get out there, get the, get the package, and have a special delivery back to base safe. What's our Roach Timer looking like? That's when the next big fight should happen. Okay. We got I a while. <laughs> yeah.
the timer that popped up said it was 418, so it means it's going to be like 118 past. Okay. Earlier so is better, I'd say, for EG. Yeah, on the early oh, yeah. side of Roche. But it doesn't really matter for EG. They just need to be around there when it's yeah. when it's up, and they can just send the courier, visage birds, they rocket flares, just prevent secret from taking it by any means. And if you can get a gank into a Roche, that's even better. Yep. But they don't they don't need to make risky plays. Risky play is pushing high ground without Aegis. That is probably the worst thing that they can do. For yeah. now, just uh, pressure each of the lanes, keep secret clumped up together, and. I would imagine just far more of the map and get more gold out of everything. Nice. Yeah. Scotty's going to be done yeah, here corner. for Old Man Fear. Yep. I wonder if Clockwork's going to be a higher priority in the next game. It was already very high priority being second pick in the first phase for EG, but after seeing this game, it's it's really difficult to zone them out no matter what supports you have. And the plays that Universe have made in this series and last is simply phenomenal. And you just have to take it away from him sometimes. See that Fear wants to push mid lane, and the Weave will go out there. Fear, not too worried about it. Pops his Manta will hang out, and they're just going to have to work with the clock as best as possible here. They're really fortunate that Ar uh, Arteezy and the rest of the Secret haven't taken to the top tower. Because of that, they can always sit around mid, and they have a lot more time to bide uh, when they're trying to push out their lanes. If they had pressure from top, they couldn't make a lot of the same plays that they did before. Which is why having a visage along with your draw is really good. So you oh, can yeah. constantly push out lanes without your draw being there. Yeah. But now you have to use Aura. Viper's too weak to do anything on its own. Constant split push. Kuro gets scouted out here by Rocket Flare, and I believe maybe spotted playing the ward, although Lestrek is charging forward and. He's a running. P What's, what is Fear up to? He's coming Oh, in wow. From downtown, they're going to be able to get the catch this one onto S4. Meanwhile, Sumail doing his own solo work on Desire. He's going to be forced to surge away. Now, Universe does go down in his one on one matchup with S4. Sumail couldn't finish his target, but now he looks to turn back onto Kuro as Fear is there to help him out. He makes the charge onto Puppy, then makes the immediate jump over to S4, who will be able to skate the way. Ends up being a two-for-two two trade here. Zai, forced to the low ground, will be safe. Is this enough for EG to push on forward? I, I would imagine not, but they're going to try to double back. That Roche clock continues to tick. It's a DD as well, right next to it. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be a really good timing. I mean, Arteezy can solo it if, oh. if he gets it. My goodness here, S4. Be careful. He's lost all of his mana and got hit pretty hard there. We'll have to double back, and is just going to work to the Ancient Camp. I imagine he goes south. He could end up just taking that DD rune away. Yeah, where are the Visage Birds? We're not... I don't actually see... Okay. Like they a... they know Roche should be up. I just saw Puppy peeing on Roche, so he knows that's, uh, that's the next focal point. This one's cheese, too. Like, uh, uh, Aegis on Fear and a cheese on Sumail Oof. is pretty much game over. Yep, and they see the DD rune and everything, but Double gonna take it on the less track. Sumail. Did see there was no Roche up <laughs> just yet, and this this is going to be a early-ish respawn, but Ooh. something we saw last game with EG, they used two of their smokes right around the time Roshan was about to respawn. They really prioritized oh, using these. Puppy. Gonna get caught out, immediate Yules to fly from Sumail. Universe gonna make the jump onto Kuro. Puppy goes down immediately, the swap back, but that puts him closer to danger. And in the both supports will go down, and what convenient timing. The big boy is back just in time for PPD to scout it on out. Will EG pull back? Probably having some pressure here in the mid lane. I would not be surprised. They haven't got the best Roche taken lineup, so maybe deciding it's just not a good use of their time, or... No, they're headed back. That makes more sense. Apart from Fear. <laughs> fear just feels invincible. Tower is He's a tanky one, so he'll take the harassment from the illusions, but with fear and these pesky birds, they'll be able to secure this tier 2 tower. Will be denied from S4, though. Oh, oh, oh. Nope, not happening. It's fear's gonna pick it up, and look at that. They're already going into the Roche. They got that solar crest. He falls pretty dang fast. Fear's on the way with company. And it looks like Secret are not going to be able to stop him from it. I like how EG hasn't been, really been giving them any opportunities to come back. Because Sphere is there, he can keep track of the Darks here. The only way they win this fight is like a vacuum onto the high ground with a wall and they just pummel themselves on the wall. But if Darks here has to defend, there's no chance they can win that fight. All right, well, they give the Aegis actually to Sumail. The cheese for now is going to be held over to Universe. Secret, this is, though. This is like the last effort. If oh, they lose man. this fight, it is... 
could be over. Yeah. It could be the beginning of the end, let's say. But for now, they're looking to fight. They run right into Aoi here. Can they focus him down? Universe comes in from behind and catches out Kuroki. Now, Aoi will go down. He's going to be forced to buy back here. Big vacuum from Zai pulls him right into the wall, or Universe will force him to the high ground to make himself away here. But Fear already locked onto his target, trying to go for Arteezy, who is going to get graved up, survives for now. And with that, will end up potentially going down. He's dropped. And with that, double kill for Fear. He's cleaning out the rest. S4, one of the last survivors is going to be dropped, and it looks like they're not going to get the fight they wanted. They go into trouble. There's just so much damage output coming from Fierce PL. He's also unkillable. It's not just that he's dealing out damage. He's so tanky, so durable. Sumail also tanky, durable, dishing out damage, and it doesn't really matter what Secret doing a fight. Arteezy is just too vulnerable. He survives longer during the grape. As soon as that grave wears off, he's going down. It's a nice try. They're they're hoping that EG will be sep separated, but they're all real, really close by. Universe doesn't really have to be close by, but if it's two people there, they kill Aoi, they kill someone else with that Aegis, and then they push high ground. They, they know that they have really long shots, but they're making the right plays and taking the only ways that they can to uh, to play to victory. If they just sit passively away for the high ground push, they just instantly lose yeah. with uh, like even lower chance of success. So it may look like they're making suicidal plays, but oh, it's, it's, it's the only option. That's yeah. that's like Dr Dr Ranger lineups in a nutshell. At this point in the game, you just have to make some YOLO, YOLO decisions. Overall, very smart play from EG. I think they're playing a lot better than yesterday. Yesterday, they, I think they had a lot of questionable strategic maneuvers, uh, maybe strategic uh, or draft yeah. issues too. But today, they came to play and they have been dominating. And this game surprisingly close. That one push at the mid high ground mm -hmm. where Universe hit that incredible hook cog initiation. If that didn't go as smoothly as it did, Secret get mid racks. From there, they get the next Roshan. And then maybe they get another lane of racks. This could be a very different game if not for that one big team fight that EG executed perfectly. They also set up the framework though to win those high ground pushes because Zai wasn't even there for one of the one of the T3 pushes because he was just completely yep. useless. So if he had like a mech or a four stab, maybe they can uh, you know save S4 from the right side and then take a fight on the high ground. But since he has he had no items and uh, no impact in the first 15 20 minutes, EG has been able to win those team fights. So their their game plan is very very sound and of course well executed. Well. Good old Octarine calls, comes out now in Lestrak oh. and Yules, oh, later, Split puppy. Earth, and Puppy. Oh, great. And just get off the shallow <laughs> grave. Please take me back home. Not happening, Puppy. He gets put to sleep, and with that, EG parade their way down the mid lane where they already did clear out the racks here, but they are on the verge of taking game number one of this best of five in the Summit 3 oh, Grand so Final. So now, the last resort. Yeah, this split is Yolo. Push. Oh, I know what you're team. doing! Scouts him out, and now Arteezy has to man up or not. He will BKB and try to make oh, it away, but Universe boy. says, Nope, not happening, my old teammate and friend. You're not going anywhere. <laughs> At this point, that just like AFK take me. This is secret just discussing game two. I feel like they're probably recognizing this is close to over. They're going to take one last hurrah in the bottom lane. Fear, though, just cannot be dealt with, even with the less track teeping home. Secret cannot take this fight. Wow, you can search BKB units? That's cool. I didn't know that. It was one of the buffs, I think, a couple of patches ago, maybe, like 6.83 or... Was it 6.84 even? But yeah, we're seeing EG now in complete control. Man, those 36 second BOTs. Or 35, whatever it is. Oh yeah, Octarine Core plus the 40 second yeah. original cooldown. That's pretty swell. I was like, man, he's, he's back yeah. there mighty fast. I was like, I was like did oh, he run back? <laughs> All right, Puppy dropped one by one they go. I mean, at this point, Secret could already be thinking about game number two, yep. but it is Absolutely. already EG to take game number one of this first match. They are looking pretty damn good. They withstand the initial onslaught from the Drow lineup from Secret. And eventually they just get so many items. They get so big and bad and beefy that the single target damage coming up from the Viper and the Drow is just not enough. I think their their off lane really needed to work. I, I don't know if a different hero would have done a lot more, but it seems that they just needed more efforts into that area of the map because that lost them a couple of pushes and eventually the game.